y'all don't understand, I'm not just saying it. I'm, that, that's really actually a very deep suggestion. That, that's a command. I think we ought to praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord this morning. Thank God that we are here together this morning. He has been good to us. We thank God for each and every one of you this morning. We are... Tickle pink, amen. Please this bunch to be able to see each and every one of you here this morning. Yes, sir. We thank the Lord for you. We know that God has been blessing us in a mighty way. He's been protecting us. But it's still beautiful to be able to see some faces that I haven't seen in a long time. Yes, sir. Amen. amen. We love you. We love you. We certainly do love you. Amen. amen. Uh, I'm not going to take a lot of time. We've got some things we want to do this morning. And I'm concerned. We want to make sure we don't get caught up in the rain. Amen. Amen. We'd rather get caught up in the spirit than get caught up in the rain. Amen. So very quickly, we do want to let you know, amen, that, that we are thanking the Lord for this day to be able to try this out on the Sunday morning, especially the first Sunday. We thank you for everybody who is here participating. I have to give a special shout out, amen, to our audiovisual team, amen, that, that worked so hard to make this happen, amen. Those are our music ministry, thank the Lord for them, amen. Uh, we thank the Lord. I, I gotta give a special shout out now to one deacon, amen, and protection, two deacons in particular. Number one, uh, Deacon Lane, who was here on yesterday as well, and all week and, and working hard to, to pray through. And I gotta say as well, thank the Lord for Deacon Lawrence this morning. Deacon Lawrence was here at 7 a.m. making it happen, amen. And of course, Deacon Hamilton and all these great deacons. We love you. Thank you so much. Everybody who is working hard to make this happen, thank you so very much. Uh, we just we just want to tell you that we love you. I'm going to step aside for just one second and ask for Sister English to come on up. I believe she has a couple of announcements, and then we're going to move forward. After Sister English comes, we're going to ask for Mr. Hartsfield to come on up with our scripture. Amen. Then we will have a prayer. Amen. Coming uh, from, from Mr. Hayes. Amen. In that order. Good morning, church. God is good, and He's very good all the time. He keep on blessing us, and we're just so grateful to Him. This morning, we want to announce, first of all, that we are still taking our tithes and offerings on Saturdays only. So you can come between 9 and 12 and bring your tithe and offering still. And of course, you're here today, so we if you have your tithe and offerings today, we are taking them today. Also, we want to recognize our sick and shut-in. We want to continue to pray for them and ask God to give them speedy recoveries and whatever their conditions are. We also have an announcement coming from St. Mark Baptist Church for the Ladies Vacation Bible School. On wings like eagles, champions of God, Bring your own Bible, Monday through Friday, July 6th through the 10th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. Their goals are to make a connection with African heritage in the Bible, realize the necessity of having confidence, discipline, and perseverance in the race of life. Understand that how you finish something is more important than finishing first. Gain the courage to share news that builds up God's community. Now this is going to be at St. Mark Baptist Church. It does not give us an, uh, oh yes it is, it's uh, Pastor Diversion in New Berlin. Okay, St. Mark in New Berlin, they're gonna have the Ladies Vacation Bible School. So if you need further information, you can come and get a copy of this flyer from me, okay ladies? All right, so we're going to continue to pray and we're going to continue to trust God in all that he does for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister It's just an honor to be here this morning among the people of God. God is so good. All the time, brought us here together in the 
We're going to lift him up and give him praise. I'll be reading from uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. I'll give you just a moment to uh, get it, find it in your Bibles. And when you have it, uh, give me a honk or flash your lights and let me know you have it. That's your amen. amen. Just a moment. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. I've got one amen. Amen. They get on board now. Amen. So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. In his days the land was quite ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange God and high places, and break down the images and cut down the groves. And commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law of the commandment. Also who took away out of the cities of Judah the high places and the images and the kingdom was quiet before him. And he built fenced cities in Judah, for the land had rest. And he had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities and make about them walls and towers and gates and bars, while the land is yet before us. Because we have sought the Lord our God, we have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side, so they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of men that bear targets and spears. Out of Judah, 300,000. Out of Benjamin, that bear shields and drew bows, 200 and fourscore thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. And there came out against them Zerah, the Ethiopian with a host of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots and came unto Meresha and Asa went out against him and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephathah at Meresha and Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said Lord it is nothing with thee to help whether with men are with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go out against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God, let not man prevail against thee. Second Chronicles chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. May the Lord bless the hearers of his word for the good and edifying of our soul. Amen. Church, amen. amen. Very quickly, very quickly, just wanted to make something clear very quickly here. Uh, we are collecting tithes and offerings on today. Uh, if you have a tithe offering, if you have anything that you would like to give, we ask you just to kind of just raise your hand. Amen. And we've got ushers and deacons who can come and collect it uh, from you. Amen. If you need a, uh, if you need an envelope, then just raise your hand. Amen. And we'll make sure that we take care of that as well. I also want to say very quickly as well, we are going to take communion together, but we're going to do it a little bit differently this morning. So what's going to happen is during the hymn of preparation, if you do not have uh, a, a, a cup, a communion cup, we ask you to raise your hand. Amen? Because what we're going to do is we're going to try to get all the communion cups out before we start. Amen? So again, during the hymn of preparation, if you do not have a uh, a communion cup. Amen. We ask you to just raise your hand. We'll make sure everybody gets one before we get started. Amen. Good morning, Philip. Good morning. Am I speaking loud enough? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. 
Come on, y'all can do better than that. God is good. All the time. All the time. Yeah. You better tell somebody. Because God has so been good to me. I just want to say, you know, in times like this, I might start my prayer off a little different this morning. But I want us to understand that we serve a God that can do anything. And Psalms 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortune. My God, in Him will I trust. At times like this, in Him will I trust. It goes on to say, surely, not if, and not maybe, but surely, he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowler and from the noisy pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall, shall be thy shield and buckler. And here's the part I like the most. Those that thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the hour that flips by day, nor for the pestilence, which is happening now, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waiteth at noonday. And this is a promise. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. Listen to this, y'all. But it shall not come, not be. Did you hear that? Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Why? Because the Lord has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. And last but not least, there shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. That's a promise from the Lord when you put your trust in it. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Father God, we ask you to go with those that have been affected by this unseen, unseen enemy. Comfort them, Lord. Fill them where they need it the most, Father God. Father God, we just want to say thank you for those of us that you have kept your head of protection around that we might be able to help somebody that's in need of help. Father God, we ask you to go into the highways, the byways, the jailhouse, the institutions, whatever there may be. Come from oh Father God. Father God, some of us are going through many things right now. Some loss of job, some loss of income, some don't know where the next paycheck gonna come from or where the next meal gonna come from. But oh Father God, you say if we put our trust in you, never had you seen the hunger, the righteous, forsaken, or the seed begging bread. So we know you can do all things, but fail. So Father God, we come to you on today saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, oh Father God. Father God, we all need you in some way, shape, or form. So as I close this prayer, oh Father God, I ask that you cover all of us. Yes, God. Father God, you say in your word, if your people, which are called by your name, will humble themselves and turn from their wicked way, and then, and only then, will you speak from heaven and heal their land. And Father God, we ask you to bless each and every one. Father God, bless those outside these walls that's lost in the part of their sin. Just have mercy, oh Father God. And we'll be able to pray for you all the honor, glory, and praise. And everybody honk their horn and say, <laughs> Father God, I come to you to ask you to bless those that gave, bless those that had the desire to and couldn't, oh Father God. This offering is for the building of your kingdom. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good job. <laughs> Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are preparing ourselves for the word of God. Amen. We're going to let this music ministry have its way. Amen. We thank the Lord for them. We have our hymn of preparation. And then we will bless the Lord. 
Amen. With the word of God. I would again ask you to raise your hand if you do not have a communion cup or if you have an offering, whatever it might be, especially during this time of preparation, we ask for you to just raise your hands and we'll make sure that we take care of you. Amen. Amen. One more time about the offering, just in case you didn't hear because the truck came on through. If you have your offering, please raise your hand. If you have need of a communion cup, please raise your hand. We want to try and do this a little bit differently this morning. So if you need something, raise your hand and we'll take care of you during the hymn of preparation. Amen. Yeah. 
as we receive the word from Pastor Titus Hill. You're going to be in a fight. Yes, but the weapon formed against you yes, shall not prosper. Amen. 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 This morning, I'm reminded of a story. Remember that there was a local DEA agent. He came up to a farm and he was going to check the farm and talk to the farmer. Amen. To to see if that farmer was growing marijuana in his farm. <laughs> farmer said, no, sir, I don't have anything like that. He said, well, I'm going to check it anyway. Yeah. He said, well, what's in that field over there? He said, well, you may not want to go to that field over there. He pulled out his badge on him, and he said, listen, I'm an agent. I'm a DEA agent, and guess what? I can go where I want, when I want. This badge says I can do what I want, and I'm going to go and check that field because I don't want to go do it. The farmer said, yes, sir. He goes over and checks the field. A couple minutes later, he, the farmer here is screaming. <laughs> DAE agent kind of runs up the hill and runs towards the fence and a big old bull is chasing after him. <laughs> and as he passes the farmer, it looks like the farmer's going to help him, but as he passes him, the farmer says, it's all right, just show him your badge. <laughs> You know, there are those who say that, that experience is the best teacher. But I'm here to let you know, I don't believe that that's necessarily the case. I think that experience sometimes can be a cruel teacher. Because sometimes experience will test you before it gives you, amen, the lesson. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And, and, and I think what we have when we read through our Bible is we see, just as Paul told us in the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 10 and 11, he explains that the scriptures have been given to us so that they can be an example for our everyday life. Amen? I just don't believe that we're meant to learn everything by experience. I believe that we are supposed to be able to read this word. And when somebody fell in that pit, we ain't got to fall in that same pit they fell in. Amen? And when somebody did something to glorify God, it shows us what we need to do in order to be able to glorify God. I believe there are very few people in the history of this holy book that says this better than a man by the name of Asa. Amen? There was a king by the name of Asa. His, his great-grandfather was David. And just like David, Asa was just real folk. Somebody say real folk. Real. You see, Asa was a, a, was a man who, who did some good things and he did some bad things. He did some things that we should emulate and some things that we should never go near. Amen? And so in the next couple of sermons, uh, at least over the next three or so, we want to look at this life of King Asa. Amen? We're going to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, on some days, 
we go lift our hands and praise. Now some days we go shake our heads in pity, amen? But we are going to look at the life of this man and understand that we can learn a whole bunch about trusting in the Lord and the, the great blessings that come from those things versus not trusting in the Lord right. and the consequences surrounding those decisions. Amen? Amen? Today we can look at the good. We'll take care of the bad and the ugly later. And we're going to focus on verse number 11. In Second Chronicles chapter 14, verse number 11, it says, And Asa cried unto his God. A anybody ever cried unto our God? Right. Is, is he your God? Is he my God? Amen. I, I know him. I just want to make sure you know him. Amen. It says, Asa cried unto his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. He said, help us, O Lord, our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude, O Lord. Thou art our God. Let no man prevail against the somebody ought to say amen. amen. Uh, what I love about this is Asa doesn't stop and say, Lord, no man's gonna, 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 gonna come against or, or stop me. He says, No, 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 I'm in this battle, and guess what? Because I'm in this battle and I am your child, I'm saying, Lord, nobody can beat you, and I'm just gonna stand behind you, amen, and, and gain the victory. I ain't gonna have to throw no punches, I ain't gonna have to cuss nobody out, I'm just gonna stand behind God and, and gain the victory, amen. This morning we want to remember, as we go through the difficulties of this life, as we see and face insurmountable odds, be it a pandemic, politics, inequality, injustice, sickness in the body, depression in the mind, whatever your battlefield is, I want you to remember what the song says, that there is no pain Jesus can't feel, no hurt he cannot heal. All the things work according to his perfect will. No matter what you're going through, remember that God is using you for the battle. It's not yours. It's the Lord's. Amen. Verse 14 says, So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa his son reigned in his stead. In his days the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of his God. Somebody say good, good. And, right. and right. Asa was a king of Judah. He came from the line of David. And like most folk, he was helped by his legacy and also hurt by his legacy. You see, we know that David was a good king. He ain't always do everything right. But ultimately, he was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. Solomon was a good king. He, he ended badly. But ultimately, he did a lot of good things. The problem with Solomon is that his IQ was outweighed by his L-U-S-T. Amen? Yeah. He, 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 I still quite can't get quite in my head what you going to do with 700 wives. Oh, yeah. And 300 concubines. Yeah. Oh, I ain't getting no, I ain't getting no amens from these fellas. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, I got some, I got some men who want to try it. Amen. I, I don't know what you think you gonna do. Amen. With 700 wives and 300 concubines. Amen. The problem, though, the problem is like father, like son. See, his lust led him to some bad stuff. Yeah. We don't know what he was going to do, but we know what they did to him. Amen. Oh, yeah. And at the end of Solomon's life, even the wisest man in the world made mistakes in idolatry. Amen. And so then after Solomon, there was his son Rehoboam. Rehoboam lacked the wisdom that Solomon had, so he made bad decisions. He was a washout. And again, just like father, like son. Then, then there was Abijah, Rehoboam's son, Asa's father. The Bible says Abijah walked in all the sins of his father, which, had, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as the heart of David his father. So unfortunately, again, we got somebody who has continued on the line like father, like son. Yeah. Then there was Asa. Solomon had messed up. Rehoboam had messed up. Abijah had messed up. Asa was next in line. Asa was in trouble, y'all. Amen? You see, psychology has this term. It's sort of a debate between psychology and biology. It says, what is more influential in your life? Is it nature or nurture? Amen? The concept being, is, is, it, is, it, is it more influential in your life to, uh, based on who you were born to or more influential in your life based on who raised you up, amen? And here's the problem with Asa, amen? He was born in sin. Yeah. 
he was shaping in iniquity, amen? And, and then you look at his nurture and you realize he had a whole bunch of folk around him yep. who had already messed up. And you see, by the world standards, they would have already wrote Asa off, amen? Yep. They would have said, that boy right there has a father who ain't worth nothing, amen? Right. That boy right there has got a mother who ain't worth nothing, and so they would have written Asa off. Anybody here ever been written off by the world who, who folk just looked at you and, and then he just decided that based on where you came from, based on what you sound like, based on what you look like, they just wrote you off. I'm here to let you know that when the world wrote him off, God picked him up. Y'all don't hear me. You, you see, you see, Asa was on a way where he should have been evil. He, he should have been bad. He, he should have done what was wrong. But the Bible says that Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord. You see, yeah. see, you see, see, here's the thing. Some folk don't get it. Some folk know how to do right, but they don't know how to do good, right? Yeah. But they know how to do right, amen. But they don't know how to do how to do good. Let, 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 me, let, let me say it this way. If, if, if you if you are a young man and and you are gotten with a young lady and you accidentally and got her knocked up, amen. And you decide that you are going to marry the young lady because there's a shotgun involved. I don't know if they still do that, amen, nowadays. But but let's just say you decide that you're going to marry her because there's a shotgun involved. You have done what is right, but you ain't do what's good, amen. In other words, you're doing the right thing for the wrong reasons, amen. But it says that, that Asa did the opposite. He did the right thing for the right reasons. He praised God because he loved God. Yeah. He gave God glory because God is good. He gave God all praise, all honor, all glory, and he did everything that was good and right in the sight of God because he realized that God is the only one yeah. who is worthy of all of our praise. So he did what was good and what was right. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that in this life, there are generational curses, amen? Yeah, yeah. In this life, sometimes we grow up around the drunk, but we ain't gotta be a drunk. Yeah. Sometimes we grow up around the druggie, but we ain't gotta be the druggie. So, sometimes we grow around the around the womanizer, or we grow around the, the, the loose woman, but guess what? We don't have to follow in those footsteps. Yes, there are generational curses, but I heard somebody say that at the name of Jesus, y'all don't hear me, that Jesus has this awesome power. Jesus can change your life. Y'all don't hear me. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. It says in verse number three, for he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and broke down the images and cut down the groves and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandment. And he also took away all the, out of the cities of Judah, the high places and the images and the kingdom was quiet before him. Yeah. God can't fight your battles if he's not close to you. You see, here's what happened. Asa looked around and he realized that Israel had put all this stuff in between them and God. He, he looked around and he saw the high places and he saw the, these idols and he saw these false gods and he saw that there was all this stuff in between them and God. Amen? And because they'd gotten farther and farther away from God, because God had sort of become distant from them, they got farther from God, they got closer to the enemy, and year after year they found themselves fighting in a war. Yeah. There might be somebody out here today who you're going through. You're going through. It seems like everywhere you turn, it don't work out. Amen? Yeah. Money ain't quite right. Friends don't seem to be vibing with you. Things just seem to be going wrong. You're having difficulties in your life. It could be because there's some distance between you and God. There could be because you put something in between you and God. And even though he wants to be near, there's some stuff in between you that's keeping you far. Amen? So Asa showed up. And, and some of these other kings might have been duds, but Asa was a stud. Amen? Asa stood up against the establishment. And it didn't matter what the folk thought. He started to tear down the high places. And yeah. he broke down the images. And he cut down the forest. And, and, and guess what? Anything that was related to a false god, he took it out. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Asa was not playing games. And because Asa gave God glory, 
glory, God gave Judah peace. Anybody here wants peace? If you want the peace of God, you first got to make peace with God. If you make peace with God, he'll give you the peace of God. And if you give God glory, he'll give you peace. You know what I love? I really love the way they finished I-295. Y'all know I-295? Everybody here knows I-295, right? I love the way they finished I-295. If you look at a map of Jacksonville, you'll see that I-295 makes a big old loop, amen? A big circle, right, around around Jacksonville. And what I love about I-295 is that it, it's just sort of, it's just far enough away so you don't get caught in all the traffic all the time, amen? But, but, but it's just close enough so that if you need to get downtown or anywhere like that, Amen. You can get on I-295 and go wherever you want in the city. Here's the problem. Folk treat God like I-295. They want him just far enough away so they can do whatever they want to do. Amen. Y'all don't hear me. They, they want him close enough so they can pray to heaven on Sunday. Amen. But they want him just far enough away so they can raise hell all week long. Y'all don't hear me. And, and so what's happening here is, is, is we're looking at the situation and Asa is saying to himself, God is all the way out on the fringes of the city. He's all the way out on the outskirts of the city. So what Asa does is he takes God from the outskirts of the city, brings him downtown, puts him in city hall, and says, everybody else and anything else that will stand against my God, it's got to go. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Verse number six says, and he built fenced cities in Judah. For the land had rest, and he had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. Verse 7 says, Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities, and make about them walls, and towers, gates, and bars. But the land is yet before us, because we have sought the Lord our God, we have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So they built, and they prospered. Amen? Here's the thing. You can trust in God in the bad times, when you prepare with God in the good times. Amen? There's no saying. It says you either, amen, just came from a storm, or you in a storm, or you on your way to a storm. Amen? Asa looked around and realized that we got peace in the land. But he also knew that peace would not always be there. Amen? He knew that as long as Satan is allowed to run to and fro back and forth. There is always going to be conflict. Amen? So what he did is, Asa did what we have to do today. He lived in peace, but he prepared for war. Somebody yeah. say amen. Yeah. He didn't wait to praise God. He didn't wait to serve God. He didn't wait to prepare. He looked and said there's some things that we can do for God right now. Amen? He said if, if God is a right now God, then I am going to be a right now servant. Amen? Yeah. And if there's something that I can do for God right now, I ain't going to wait until trouble shows up. Amen? To be able to do something for God. Look, look at verse number 7. Verse number 7 specifically, it says, uh, we're going to do these things while the land is before us. That means that while we still have a chance, amen? Yeah. Listen, while, 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 while God is blessing us with peace right now, we need to do something for God while there is still time, amen? What, what Ace is saying is, uh, God has given us much more than what we need. Yeah. God has given us much more than what we ever, ever could deserve, amen? And so he's saying here, the least we can do is give back to God. I, I, I ain't got no amen. If God died for us, the least we can do is live for him, amen? And, and so what he's is saying here is he looks around at the land that God gave to them and he said, just in case Satan wants to, wants to raise his head, we're going to fortify the cities. We're going to build up the walls. We're going to get power in between us and the enemy. Can I tell you something, church? I have never, ever been more proud to be the pastor of the Philadelphia Missionary Baptist Church. Because you know what we had? We had about a year, almost a year and a half, of peace and prosperity. We had a time where God was growing us and building us and doing extraordinary things for us. And you know what we did? We put a, 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 a guard 
around our hearts, amen? So now we find ourselves in the war, and just like we praise God when he was prospering, we can praise God in the war. I know there is some people here at the Philadelphia Missionary Baptist Church who are strong soldiers, loyal to the cause, willing to endure hardness, willing to stand up for God. When the devil pushes us down, he don't understand who he's coming against. We just don't keep getting back up because God is with us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? I'm proud. I'm so proud of all the hard work that you have done. So proud of those who have still continued to give your tithes and your offerings. Thank you for all those who have called me and all those who have prayed for me. And, and even at times where I couldn't get back to you quickly, thank you for your grace. I love you. I have never been more proud. You've been awesome. And you did what Asa did. When the times were good, we prepared for war. Amen? And, and, and you know, here's the thing, church. And here's the reason we got to do what we got to do even in this moment. There's an old saying that yesterday is a canceled check. Tomorrow is a promissory note. Only cash we got is today. And so we are going to do what we can do while we can do it. Jesus said work while it's day. Because there's going to come a time when nights go fall and no man can work. Amen. If you love the Lord, we're telling you to work for God right now. If you don't love the Lord, we're telling you to get right with God and do it right now. I heard the song say, get right with God and, and he will show you how right down at the cross where Jesus shed his blood. If you get right with God, you need to do it right now. Verse 8, Asa, and Asa had an army of men that bear targets and spears out of Judah, 300,000 and out of Benjamin that bear shields and drew bows, 200 and forced 4,000. All these were mighty men of valor. Amen. Yeah. Verse 9 says, And there came out against against them Zerah the Ethiopian with a host of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots came unto Moresha. And then it says, And Asa went out against them, and they set the battle in the ray in the valley of Zephatha in Moresha. So what, here's what's happening. It says, Everywhere, everywhere uh, uh, we go and everything that we do, Amen. Even when we have times of peace and prosperity, know and understand that the devil is going to still show up. And what happened here is after 10 years of peace, 10 years of prosperity, 10 years where all they were doing is interacting with God and loving God, guess who showed up? I remember God, I remember God called all the angels in the book of Job. Y'all remember that? He, he called all of his angels together. Amen? Now, he invited the angels. But guess who showed up? I'm here to let you know that if, if the devil is bold enough to show up in heaven with God, y'all don't hear me, he's bold enough to show up in your household, he's bold enough to show up at the church, he's bold enough to show up at your job, he's bold enough to show up at the hospital, he's bold enough to show up at the courtroom, he's bold enough to show up wherever, but I'm here to let you know he cannot be everywhere at once. We serve a God who is omnipresent. We serve a God who is omnipotent. We serve a God has all power. Yeah. So he shows up, and when he shows up, he brings a million men with him. Yeah. These men are grizzled veterans. These men had already conquered Egypt, and, and they had wreaked havoc everywhere that they went. And guess what? If that was not bad enough, he looked around and he said, they got chariots, yeah. and we walk in. Y'all yeah. yeah. know how it is sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I'd have been in a place where I really wanted to have a chariot. But I had to walk. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And so and so he looks around and he says, not only do they have more than us, but they got chariots and we walk in. Amen? Yeah. And, but here's the thing. Not only is that bad, but it's almost like saying that we showed up on foot and they got tanks. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And, and so what's happening here is he's looking at all of this and he's remembering, though, what God said about Job. Y'all remember that? Devil showed up. He was looking for trouble. Devil showed up. He was looking for a fight. Amen? And God said, have you tried? Yeah. My servant Job, amen? The devil showed up with a million men, and guess what?
God said, have you tried my servant Asa? I'm here to let you know the devil's going to show up in your life. The question is, will God be able to say, have you tried Deacon Hamilton? Have you tried Brother Danny? Have you tried Deacon Lane? Have you tried Sister, 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 Sister Jones? And have you tried even Deacon Jones? And, and have you tried all of my people? Have you tried the Philadelphia Missionary Baptist Church? Have you tried my people? Amen. Because if you're looking for a fight, yeah. you'd have found one. Amen? Yeah. And here's what I love about Asa. And here's what I encourage each and every one of you to do as well. Asa looked at these men. Asa was not fooled and Asa was not foolish. He looked over and he saw that they had a million men. He knew he had 580,000 men. He knew that they were in some serious, serious trouble. But you know what he did? He ain't going cower. He ain't going hide in the back. You know what he did? It says that he went up to the front lines to face the enemy. I'm here to let you know today that we are going to have to face this enemy head on. We are going to have to face this enemy head on. On. We have to go forward and face this enemy no matter what he may be trying to do to us. We have to stand up. We have to go forward and face this enemy. Maybe your enemy is depression. Maybe your enemy is a lack of resources. Maybe your enemy is this pandemic. Maybe you are sick. Maybe you are shut in. Maybe you are hurting. Maybe you are broken. I don't know what your enemy is, but I'm here to let you know that no matter how big your enemy is, we've got a God who's bigger. Asa looked the enemy in the face and he pushed forward. Amen? Amen. Finally, verse number 11, and we'll be taking this home. It says, Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let no man prevail against thee. Asa, Asa could give God his problems, and he could turn it over to Jesus, and he could have the Lord to fight his battles because he recognized that the battle was not his in the first place. He recognized that the battle belonged to the Lord. Christ, the, the church, he makes an amazing statement about the God, about God and about Jesus, about his faith right here. It's one of the most amazing and greatest statements of faith in the entire Bible. Here is the thing. Asa was not fooled. Asa knew what was happening. He knew that they were in trouble. And so what he says here is, guess what, God? We have done what is good and right in your eyes. Listen, Lord, we know that this battle is not ours. It belongs to you. He said, listen, that they will not prevail, not against us, amen, but they will not prevail against you amen and we're gonna let you fight it and we're gonna stand back and wait because we know that if you have let them come through they had to come through you to get to us y'all don't hear me when god stands and fights for you all you gotta do is sit back and let him do what he does best he will exceed your every expectation he will do what he said he gonna do amen Asa said, it ain't about us. It's all about you. He said, not my will, but thine be done. You know, I remember there was a day with a chaplain for the home team, the amen of a football game, he was asked to, to go and to pray with the normal home team, but also asked to go and pray with the visiting team. Yeah. And so he went and he prayed with the home team, and then he went and he prayed with the visiting team, and he went to his seat, and he took a seat. His friend talked to him and said, yeah, you know, man, if you went and you prayed with the home team, and you went and you prayed with the visiting team, what do you think God's going to do today? He said, I think God's going to sit back and enjoy a good game. The Ethiopians wished. They wished God had sat back and enjoyed the game. But that's not what God did. God stood up. He did not just fight with Judah. He fought for Judah. Amen. He did not just fight with Asa. He fought for Asa. Amen. 
And in that moment, 580,000 men on foot beat a million men yes, with tanks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One last thing I want to point out to you today, and I think this needs to be said. The Bible does not say that they fought them and they beat them and they no one was lost. I, 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 I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. Come on, Doc. It's okay. Come on, Doc. It doesn't say. No. It doesn't say that they fought them Come on, dog. and they beat them yes, sir. and that they did not lose it. Come on, dog. Come on, dog. All it says is that they prevailed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're fighting yes, sir. a pandemic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're fighting a painful and difficult battle. I wish I could tell you that no one will get sick. I wish I could tell you that we would not lose anyone, but we know yes, that that's yes, not true because we've already lost some who've been very close to us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I'm here to let you know. Come on, come on, Doc. In this life, yes, sir. you might lose some battles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But praise be to God that the war has already been won. The devil showed up and he went up against our Savior. He thought it's the listen, Jesus said, guess what? If, if you think I'm gonna hit you, then nail my hands. Yeah. And if you think I'm gonna kick you, then nail my feet. That's all right. Yeah. But 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 Jesus had just one warning for him. He said, I got one warning for you. You best not lift me up. Y'all don't hit me up. I'm gonna warn you, Satan. You better not lift me up. Because I'm gonna guarantee you this. If I've been lifted up, I can guarantee you this. If I've been lifted up, y'all don't hear me. If Jesus be lifted up, he promised to draw all men unto him. And there ought to be somebody today who can say, I thank you, God. I know I'm in a fight. I know I'm in a battle. I know I'm in a war.
we've been able to acknowledge that he is in fact Lord. We're moving to our communion service. We know we're doing this a little bit differently on today. But we're going to make sure that everyone is taken care of. Amen. Amen. For our communion service, if you are at home, then if you've got your cup and if you've got, amen, your juice, amen. And we ask you to just prepare yourselves right now. If you are here, amen, if you are here with us today, we ask you to prepare your hearts as well. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, starting at verse number 23, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Before we pray, we ask one more time. Has anyone been omitted? And one to our right. And one to our left. Has anyone been omitted? We're going to ask for Mr. Hartsfield to come. I ask you to pray over the table for us. Oh Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place through all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even before that from the earth and the world, for everlasting, for everlasting. We bow humbly before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask your forgiveness for anything that we've done is not pleasing in your sight. We've come at this moment right now, Lord, to take up this communion. Do we do it in remembrance of your death and suffering on Calvary? Oh God, remember how you hunger, how you died, how you suffered, that we might be free. Oh God, we say thank you. Bless this bread and bless this world. And bless everyone that's going to protect you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 sacraments. And on that night, Jesus had taken that bread and he prayed over it. He broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. He said, as you go to consume this, you are always, no matter how often you do so, doing so in remembrance of the sacrifice of the Lord. Let us all eat together. After that,
that same manner. He poured the cup. He said, this is the New Testament in my blood. It says, as often as you eat the bread, as often as you drink the cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Let us all drink together. Well, I know it was the blood. Well, I know it was the blood. Well, I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. Said that I know it was the blood for me. Oh, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Oh, I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. Said that I know it was the blood for me. Put him all night long. They whooped him all night long. They whooped him all night long for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. And I know, I know it was the blood for me. Oh, and I know it was the blood. Yes, yes. Oh, 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 I know it was the blood. Yes, yes. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Coming back again. How many believe that out there? He's coming back again for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. So that I know it was the blood for me. We will. We will omit our right hand of fellowship, amen. But we do want to say this. On that night, the Bible says that they all went out unified. They were in tune with one another and they were in tune with the master. They went out unified and they went out singing together with a hymn. Y'all yeah. know my favorite hymn. What's your favorite hymn about? Go ahead and sing it. God's grace is absolutely amazing. Yeah. And so we're going to sing together as we move the close out. We will sing together and I'm going to come by and I'd love to be able to see each and every one of you before you leave on today. Okay. Amen. We are Thanks. going to all stand, anyone who is sitting, and we are going to sing Amazing Grace. Yeah. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amen? Amen.